So I thought I'd share a real-time video of me using a Pentel brush pen, which is like an inking pen, just to do the outlines on this uh, Hulk picture that I'm going to use markers on. With fine line pens, you get a small, uh, thin, and constant kind of mark because the nib is the same all the way through. So you can get, you know, as I'm showing you here, 0 0.1, 0 0.5 is a bit thicker. And then you can go to 0 0.7, which is thicker again, but it is a constant kind of width of mark. Even, you know, you can flick it for different effects. But the difference with the brush pen is it is a flexible nib. So you can achieve very, very thin lines by just, you know, varying your pressure with the thing. Or if you press down a little bit harder, then the brush pen leaves more ink, a thicker line of ink uh, on your paper. So it's like having many inking tools, but in one. Uh, you can get thin marks, you can get thick marks, you can get that kind of dribbly kind of um, uneven pressured mark that i just shown you there. And you can flick it for doing little sort of bits of hatching and cross hatching uh, quite effectively and, and very thin. And then you can just use it to put little small um, textured effects for perhaps fur or even what I'm trying to go for now, which is supposed to look like grass. So for me, it's great because it means I don't have to have tons of different uh, pieces of equipment, tons of different tools. I can just pick up the brush pen and just by varying the pressure with it, I can achieve a whole range of marks, which maybe I wouldn't be able to get such a range um, of using a fine line pen or a set of fine line pens even. Plus, it gives your work that kind of um, kind of artistic, arty kind of way that you know the classic artists used to use. People like Jack Kirby using a brush and ink from back in the day. So it gives you your artwork a, a little feel of that kind of old school flavor of comic book inking, if you will. So here you can see me inking uh, my pencil drawing of the Incredible Hulk. And really what I'm trying to do and what I'm always practicing with the brush pen is to get a variable line width. Um, and what I mean by that is obviously I can, I can start off thin and then I can press down a bit harder and I can go for a thicker line. So really what I'm aiming to get is thicker lines where they would be the sort of more shaded or more shadowy line on the actual face of the Hulk. And this is something that it's extremely difficult to get using a fine line pen because as I mentioned the nib is a constant kind of thickness so you know you can press down harder and you don't get much of a different kind of mark whereas with the brush pen you can achieve these very fine delicate lines where you need them to be and then you can go for thicker lines where you would have that kind of um, the thicker shadow or just if you're trying to do a heavier outline and lots of interior line uh, inking line work that is thinner. With this picture of the Hulk the light source that I'm thinking is going to be coming from above when I start adding the shadows and shadings and so any line that is at the base or below where that light would be hitting and deliberately trying to do thicker with the brush pen so that means just pressing down that little bit harder on the pen to give a thicker mark and looking at it just now I can see that I've already got more variety in my lines and, and variety in the line widths than I would have if I was using just regular fine line pens, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, etc. You'll see me try and do uh, quite a lot of continuous lines as well. I mean, I say I try to, um, because the brush pen really responds well to you if you can use it confidently and you can do a line that goes, you know, and swoops or swerves in one confident kind of um, swing of the of the sort of fingers. I mean, you, as I say that, you can see me doing lots of little lines because I'm doing the eye, so I'm being very, very careful to try and make sure that it's in proportion. But when you see me doing maybe the jawline or the, or the mouth and so on, you'll see me try and keep it a nice continuous line if I can, uh, not lots of little um, sort of dashed lines because it just looks more expressive, more confident, and the line work then flows if you can do that. One of the other great things about this pen is that you don't have to dip it um, like a dip pen would, you can put a cartridge into it and it works just like a fountain pen and the ink just like constantly flows out and what I don't find that I have to do that I do with dip pens is is sometimes have a bit of tissue next to the table and, and sort of like wipe the pen off if there's too much ink on it. Really with the brush pen the amount of ink that you get coming out of there is based on how much pressure you push down or don't press down with. 
So hopefully you can see that I have varied my line widths now as, I, as I've done the jaw and the cheekbones. And you can see that along the jaw, I've gone for a fairly thick line, virtually all the way from one side down under the chin and up to the other side. And now as I'm coming up and doing things like the ears and the top of the jaw line, I'm going for slightly thinner lines to suggest the light might be hitting those jutting out kind of areas. My idea with this is to finish off the, the shading and the tones using grey markers, uh, but there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't combine fine line pens with the brush pen and do uh, a bunch of hatching or add a bunch of tones using uh, you know, fine line pen just flicked lines to suggest dark and light areas. I try to achieve quite a large amount of control with my lines and the way that I hold the brush. So what I'll usually do is you can see I'm holding it quite tightly in my fingertips and then I'll rest the kind of the palm of, of my hand um, on the table and then just pivot the brush up and down uh, you know from my wrist basically and that keeps my hand rested on the table but allows me quite a bit of movement from the fingers but it also um, gives me a lot of stability uh, and control over the line work that I'm trying to achieve. You can see a lot of variable width here with the, the lips because the top of the top lip I do quite thin because the light's catching that. Uh, the middle of where the lips meet I do thicker because obviously it's curving inwards and it's slightly more shadowed. And then the actual bottom of the bottom lip I'm pressing down fairly heavily and trying to get a much thicker mark to suggest that's very shadowed. As I draw the eye, uh, the second eye, trying to keep it the same size as one on the other side, you can see the face is beginning to take shape now and you can see the Hulk's mean expression and some of those nice thick angular lines which hopefully have made them look as though they're flowing even though you saw that maybe I did them in like one, two, three little strokes of the brush. You know, I'm still working up to my confidence where I can do, you know, an entire cheekbone down into a jaw and a chin in one continuous fluid stroke where I'm just, you know, varying the pressure on it as I go, but I never actually pick the brush up off the, the paper. So as I gear up to do the hair, I'm, I'm doing slightly different strokes here. I'm trying to uh, press down a little bit thicker at the beginning and then flick the brush upwards uh, and, you know, pull it off the paper, giving us a thick stroke. So that'll be thicker near the base, so where his fringe is, and then hopefully it'll fade out and be lighter uh, as it pulls off the page. Uh, and that was that was just my idea to try and show that the fringe is sort of curving in and the fringe is always going to be naturally a bit shadowed at the front, especially if the light source is coming from above, from, from the top. And this is probably where it's clearest about me, you know, resting the side of the palm of my hand on the table and just flicking my wrist upwards to get the nice sort of pivoting stroke, giving me quite a bit of control. Uh, and here I'm starting to make the lines slightly more concave as we get over to the right hand side to um, suggest the idea that obviously his hair is growing from the top and then flowing down the sides, curving down the side. So I can't repeat the way I've done the strokes on the left hand side. I've got to reverse the curve here to suggest the hair flow is changing. What's great is that you can see lots of um, pros these days, uh, pro comic book artists, um, using this kind of a tool or even in the case of people like uh, Sean Gordon Murphy he, he uses a dip pen and a brush so he can do all these crazy effects like splattering it and um, leaving his fingerprints on there as, as tone all this stuff that I'm not quite brave enough to do yet and uh, I've seen some videos where Todd Nork who's drawing like Nightcrawler and Spider-Man and stuff he uses the brush pen for his lines and the flip side of that is you see other artists at conventions you know, they are absolutely committed to using the fine line of pen and the really constant fine line width that they get from that. So with this video, I mean, I'm really just scratching the surface of what you can do because I'm just showing basic line work and you can use a brush pen to do hatching, cross hatching and add tone, you know, really effective and moody tone to your um, drawings as well by using this, this particular tool. Um, apologies about the anatomy as well. I've probably put in far too many muscles here are these curved lines for muscles uh, around the neck, but it's the Hulk. He's exaggerated. He's supposed to have lots of muscles. So, um, don't judge me too harshly if you're looking at it and you you know your anatomy better than me and you're like, oh, he's got way too many muscles coming out there. Um, I suppose I can always just say it's a comic book drawing. It's almost finished and once I'd done this, I would leave it for a couple of hours and then take a, a good rubber to it and take out all of my pencil lines, just leaving the ink lines. 
that's my outline inks on the Hulk pretty much finished and uh, I hope you got something out of the video I mean if you were aware of a brush pen before brilliant and, and I've shown you something different great if you now know about it and you think you might get one let me know in the comments below or whether you're just gonna hang on to your fine line pens forever